Hi, I'm Dr. Robert Peltier, Chief Medical Officer at North Oaks Health System in Hammond. I'm going to speak to you today a little bit about coronavirus. What you need to know about coronavirus is coronavirus is a novel virus, which means that it's new, especially to man. We, coronaviruses are um, viruses that have a natural reservoir of animals. In this case, it's most likely to be the bat. And sometimes those viruses uh, mutate and jump into the human host. And unfortunately, when those do, sometimes they cause severe illness that the body's not ready to combat. In this case, this was a beta coronavirus, the same type of virus that SARS and Middle Eastern Respiratory Syndrome, MERS, uh, were. And they, uh, they similarly had uh, some severe lower respiratory symptoms. Caused a lot of worldwide concerns, but hopefully today we'll talk a little bit more about it so you understand. Many want to know where this virus came from and uh, why is it in China and will it be here? What we do know is that this particular virus, the DNA has been sequenced and it, with all likelihood it had an animal vector of a bat. Bats normally carry this particular uh, type of virus, a beta coronavirus, and uh, unfortunately in some areas of China uh, and where this was discovered in the Wuhan market, bats are sold. Uh, in China they eat a lot of exotic animals and uh, either you know the vector of eating a bat or sometimes the animals that they're also selling there also eat bats. Bats are a common food source for many wild animals. We also know that in that, that particular wet market, it's called the Wuhan wet market, it's called wet because they sell seafood there. They're not near the coast, but it's kind of like a farmer's market that sells seafood. There were many wild animals for sale there. Um, also in that market, there are a lot of people and they're very close to many live animals and, and, and dead animals. And that harbors the ability for viruses to move from an animal reservoir to a human host. Uh, we know that that's the likely source because on uh, December 21st of last year at, in Wuhan, China, a, a huge city in China, it's a, a more than uh, the combination of New York and LA combined in population, uh, more than 11 million people live in this city. At this particular market, a patient, a patient came to the hospital there who worked at that market. Three days later, four other patients came in with very similar symptoms needing hospitalization. Dr. Lee, who unfortunately passed away from this particular disease, was the first to sound the alarm, uh, saying that this could be a zoonotic infection, novel or new to humans. Uh, turned out he was right. Uh, since that time, we have seen that virus grow steadily since uh, the beginning of the year. And uh, as of this morning, and today is the 26th of February, we had a little over 82,000 confirmed cases. There are probably a lot more because many people don't get tested. Uh, we've had over 2,000 deaths from this uh, particular virus. We also know that looking from the numbers that it's somewhere between one and one and a half is the best guess um, um, mortality or how many people actually succumb to this disease. And again, most of them are over the age of 60 and most of them have underlying medical conditions. But that's not 100% true, so it can affect and hurt anyone. And the best way to combat that is to try to prevent getting the disease by staying healthy, washing your hands, um, uh, staying home when you are sick from school, those kind of things. I would also recommend that everybody who hasn't had all their routine vaccinations absolutely keep those up to date. Uh, so that they aren't already having their immune system taxed by a second illness. Although this virus originated in China, it has quickly spread and is now in more than 30 countries worldwide. We've seen large um, populations, especially in South Korea, in uh, Iraq, and Italy have a uh, of many hundreds of people infected. And that certainly is concerning. Uh, in the United States, the last uh, a report I read this morning showed that 57 Americans had coronavirus. All of those patients had 
uh, origins in, either they had been to China or they had just been in contact with somebody, a loved one, for example, that had just come back from that area. Actually, most of them were uh, people on the cruise ship uh, that was uh, docked in Japan that was quarantined for a while. So 35, I believe, of those particular patients were quarantine patients on the cruise ship. So there have been, as of this day, there have been no patients that have picked up the coronavirus here in the United States. This virus is like flu viruses and cold viruses, um, including adenovirus, rhinovirus, and other viruses spread usually by contact respiratory droplets. We don't know all the ways that this particular virus is spread now because we're only about 65 days into this particular illness or knowing it being in man, so we don't have definitive proof, but we do know that generally this is a respiratory droplet spread, coughing, sneezing, um, contact when you touch your face, your eyes, your nose, your mouth, and then touch someone else, uh, shaking hands. Uh, all, all those things that we normally associate with the transmission of influenza is the same way that this virus gets transferred. So it's very important that we practice great respiratory hygiene. hygiene. What is respiratory hygiene? Respiratory hygiene is um, when we uh, do cough, sneeze, have a runny nose, that we properly take those fluids and protect them from hitting other individuals. For example, when we cough, if you can cough into your arm here, not on your hands so you don't spread it, but cough in your arms, preferably into a Kleenex or a, um, you know, if you carry a, a, a handkerchief with you or something like that. And it's mainly not to, you certainly are infecting that particular item. But what you're trying to do is prevent the, uh, the spread. When you cough or sneeze, especially a sneeze, that travels six to eight feet sometimes. And that's why a close contact is known as someone who is six to eight feet away from a patient or within that, that distance because it does spread um, along that, that route. So blocking that, you'll see people with masks on. Most of the time those masks are not to prevent the inhalation of a virus. The virus is much too small for most masks. What it's to stop is people that are coughing spread out. So if you arrive at a North Oaks clinic, at our emergency department, or at any uh, entrance into our facility, you'll see a lot of signs and, and boxes with masks that says, if you're ill, you know, please at least put on a mask. We would ask in general that uh, people uh, that are sick stay home. Maybe that's the most important message. If your child is sick, keep them home from school. If you are sick, stay home from work. Uh, your illness may not kill you or hurt you or make you severely ill, but it's the people that have underlying medical conditions that most viruses, including influenza, generally uh, hurt. And so we know already from some early studies about the coronavirus that 80% of the people who have passed away from this particular virus have been over the age of 60, and 75% of them have had underlying medical conditions. So just like flu, if, you have, if you're ill and you pass it to somebody else who has diabetes or chronic obstructive pulmonary disease or heart disease, unfortunately, that little in, you know, insult to their body may be just enough to push them over the edge and end their life. So, you know, do yourself, your community, your family a favor by when you're sick, practicing good respiratory hygiene, and absolutely staying home or away from others when you're sick. Unfortunately, at this time, there is not a definitive treatment for coronavirus. Antibiotics are not effective in virus, in combating viruses. So at this time, uh, we are uh, working towards researching for different treatments. Luckily, with uh, the advancements in medicine, we have multiple antivirals out there. Well, we don't know if any of them work. Uh, they certainly are being tried, uh, especially in China and Thailand, where they have large numbers. They are trying to see if these medications are effective. But right now, we don't have any medicines that are definitely going to combat this virus. It's supportive care. 
People also ask about vaccines. Unfortunately, uh, it'll be probably a year or two before a vaccine is available for human use. Vaccines and researching them to make sure that they're effective, unfortunately take a significant amount of time to, um, to make sure that that particular vaccine do, is effective against uh, a virus. So uh, a vaccine will not be available for some time. Upon entering our medical facility, any of our clinics, any of our laboratories, et cetera, you may be asked if you've recently traveled. Right now, the coronavirus is certainly present in the United States, but only in certain individuals, all of which have an origin outside of this country. Eventually, that may not be true. When that occurs, and even now, we will ask you if you have traveled outside of the United States. If the answer is to an infected country, we have a protocol where we'll ask you to step into a certain area just until we can clear whether you are a potential risk of spreading that disease to others. Just a precautionary measure to ensure the non-transmission of disease, but if you have any questions about that, just ask the personnel at the front desk. Most of the time they will also ask you to uh, don a, a surgical mask to prevent, especially if you're showing signs of illness, if you're coughing or sneezing. There's a lot of junk out there on the internet. I've been doing research for many weeks on the coronavirus and I've seen a lot of information that has no scientific evidence to it. Please go to reputable websites. Uh, many of our government agencies have vetted the, the information that is on there and it's reliable. The CDC, the Centers for Disease Control at cdc.gov has a great uh, coronavirus uh, website. It's got patient-friendly information, not just healthcare, uh, complex healthcare information. It's got patient-friendly information. The World Health Organization, or WHO, also has that, as well as the Louisiana Department of Health has many um, uh, resources for you to do your own, um, get your own information about coronavirus and what you need to do to protect you and your family. Thank you.